Hi guys, I'm Katie. And I'm Courtney, and we work at Dress Gallery, Kansas's favorite bridal store. Welcome back to our channel where we dive deep into the world of all things bridal, so let's get started with today's topic. Let's go. So today we are gonna tell you a couple of like really cute, cool kind of stories of like different brides that we've had come in and shop here at Dress Gallery, and how their situation was a little bit different, and kind of how we navigated that to be able to make sure that the bride felt as taken care of as possible, but then also that she looked the best that she possibly could on her wedding day so. and these also need to kind of be taken you get a little nugget of advice from each one of these little stories we're mm -hmm. gonna tell you so you can take that in and make the best possible decisions for you in your wedding gown buying journey yep so let's jump right let's in do it yeah so story number one, um, we don't have like one specific bride in mind when we talk about like this type of story. Because there's a handful there's that a will handful. fit each one of these. Agreed, yeah. agreed. But the first one is we, every so often we'll have a lot of brides who come in on a very short timeline to get their dress. And when I say very short, I mean like, my wedding's a, this weekend. A week or something. Yeah. My like, wedding's next Saturday. Guess what? It, I need a dress for tomorrow. And we're like, oh, okay, let us panic. Go into like intense focus mode. And then we do our best to just really try to find that bride exactly what she's looking for, for the price point that she needs, or more importantly, for the fact that she needs to have it quickly and she needs to get it done. That is another reason why we also partner with Juliana at Quick Stitch, mm -hmm. which if you haven't watched our video about alterations, yes. please do that. We will make sure to put the link in the bio so that way you can check it out if you need to. But that's a good reason why we have Juliana in our pocket is because there's a reason that she's called Quick Stitch. Admittedly, occasionally, Last minute alterations can cost a little bit more simply because it kind of has to force you at the head of the line compared to other brides. But Juliana is a really, really great resource that we have that really helps brides be able to find exactly what they're looking for. And if they need alterations, they can turn around and go and see her essentially the same day that they find their dress with us. The second story that we kind of have is brides who, and we've mentioned this before, want to come in two or more years before their wedding. And we've mentioned it in many a video before that we only really accept appointments with a wedding date 18 months or so out. Here are a couple exceptions, one that kind of worked out really well and one that didn't. So first one up, there was a, uh, one of our consultants had a bride that was looking for something Very super, specific. super, super specific. If I remember correctly, she wanted like satin macado and like a ball full gown. satin macado ball gown. Yeah. A little bit, just a tad bit before we were seeing that yeah. often in our designers. So we knew it was coming, we just didn't have it yet, essentially. So she, you know, she, she had these, like a list of like five to six things that she absolutely needed her dress to have. And so she had come in already and we didn't have anything because she wanted something super specific. So this particular consultant kept note of those particular things she was looking for. And we actually ended up having a test um, trunk show and we do have a video on trunk show. So check that out if you don't know what we're talking about with that. But we had a test trunk show where literally that exact that gown with all of those specifications came in as one of our samples. So we were able to call, call her, her and, and have her come, come on in. in. And so in that case, she did get to buy her dress uh, to about two and a half years before she, I mean, before the wedding and honestly about a year, year and a half before she needed to. Mm -hmm. That's just because she was looking for something, something super so specific. specific. Mm -hmm. So now she kind of has that taken care of and out of the way since so she doesn't have to worry about like searching for like a year plus and getting really close to her wedding day to try to find that specific thing because yep. the less time you get with something like that the harder it can become to find so if you're one of those people that is very very particular and there are certain things that your wedding dress has to have and there uh, is no wiggle room for that the sooner that you start looking for it the easier your time is going to yes. be, simply because that might make it a little bit easier for your consultant to be able to give you what you're looking for, which is what happened with this particular bride. Because she gave us two years in advance, we were able to find what she was looking for, and normally it doesn't really work out that way. And thankfully, yeah. a lot of our other brides are a little bit more flexible than some other people are too, so it makes it a little easier. But thankfully, if you're really, really specific and you're looking for something like that, we definitely recommend that you talk to us early, so that way if we need to do customizations or any type of changes mm -hmm. like that, we've got plenty of time for it. 
And then that is a perfect segue into kind of our next story. And this is a little bit of a cautionary tale, which is This what, is the bad thing. This, this is, is the bad one. Don't be this person. Don't be this person. <clears throat> Every so often we'll have a bride who comes in and she is very forceful about the fact that she has to have an appointment two years in advance, even though that's not our store policy. Mm -hmm. And there have been a couple of times where we have found a dress. Oh my gosh, yay. Because as you know, you come we here, you're going to find a dress. We so. find your dresses. We're going to find you one. So she finds one. Oh my gosh, yay. Gets it ordered. And then a year down or a year down the line, she has what we like to call dress regret. regret. And that means that she has spent time on Instagram and Pinterest looking at other dresses. Mm -hmm. She has been wanting and wondering about other dresses. She might have even made other appointments to try on dresses, even though she's already purchased her dress. Wow. And doing that causes her to feel regret and anxiety about the dress that she actually already chose. And then thus leaving her and with, more I don't know if I want that. put money down on. That's the biggest thing. Because one of the reasons that we have you sign an all sales final contract is for the this purpose. Once we order a dress that is yeah. special ordered for you, it's yours. It's yours. We cannot send it back it's to the not, manufacturer. It's not, these dresses aren't just sitting in a warehouse or sitting in our back stock room just waiting for somebody to purchase them. They're literally made, made to order. For you. So they don't go into production and that's why it takes so long for them to come in. So you give us the, that deposit and that money to order that dress. We then, that money goes to the designer that pays for your dress to it, it be produced. Mm -hmm. So that dress is yours is bought and paid for at that point yep. there is no take backs nothing none of that so if you are somebody that while it's good to continue looking at there's um, nothing wrong Instagram with people on instagram sure to keep doing your wedding planning you have to have the wherewithal to know that you have chosen a dress yep. and that is the one that you stick with bottom line is there are tens of thousands of potential dresses there are going to be more dresses like there's always going to be there's a new always season. going to be there's always going to be more there's always going to be another dress but the but the bottom line is is you've had a, an emotional connection with that dress so if for some reason you are feeling a little unsure all you need to do is just like hey I want to come back in and try my dress on whether it's your exact dress or the sample doesn't matter we you know that happens kind of all the time so that you can feel better and then you can refeel some of those emotions again and then you feel confident in, in your decision. So that's another reason, like just a little bit of a cautionary tale yeah. as to why we don't allow brides to shop more than 18 months in advance, why we super do not encourage brides to continue yeah. shopping after that they have already found their wedding dresses and just stuff like that because it's kind of just asking for dress regret yeah. and we don't want you to feel that. We want you to feel confident and happy about your decision. A cautionary tale on sizing. So let's say you find your wedding dress. Yay! Oh my gosh, we found your dress. That is when we go and we measure you. We measure your bust, we measure your waist, we measure your hip, and then we compare you to the designer size chart to fit you in that dress. 90% of the time, 90 is a pretty good ballpark, we fit for the waist. So we really, really try to make sure that the waist is gonna fit best and that that or if fits it's really fitted well. the hip as well. Yeah, we're, we're in the hip if it's a fitted dress, not something that's an A-line. However, if you are particularly blessed in the upper torso area or the chest area. yeah or you are particularly blessed with an extra bit of a booty mm -hmm. we will often fit the dress for that area instead of the waist hip area we will go for the you've, biggest portion i mean you've probably heard it before yeah that we fit for the largest part mm -hmm. and then everything gets tailored down down later. in so there have been a couple of times where we've had a bride come in and we've ordered her, say for instance, a her waist and hip are a size 10, but her bust puts her at a 12, 14. So because she has larger girls and a little bit of a bigger bust, we will order that larger size. The larger size comes in, mm -hmm. she tries it on, and she's very disappointed that there will be alterations that need to happen in the or bust. Or she's wondering why it's not fitting better. Yeah, or why doesn't it fit better to begin with? Yes. The biggest reason that that happens is because we fit you for an anomaly body area unlike other people. So basically we tailored and custom fit as much as we could that dress to you and walked you through the process of needing alterations elsewhere so that for instance you can take it down in the waist and hip instead of having to let it out in the bust because it's always easier to take, take a dress in than it is to go out. There are other 
factors that when it comes to the dress like certain design features so for mm -hmm. example the kind of larger busted bride example that Courtney just gave if she's wearing a strapless dress and yep. she wants to make sure that that neckline comes up a touch it's higher than something that's going to be too low where so she makes sure she's feel more comfortable mm -hmm. those we'll larger size up. those larger sizes can um, account for that we are going to make a recommendation for yes. you a professional this is yes. my opinion this is what I'm going yes. to refer to you yes. and if you do decide that you do not want to take our professional recommendation yes. we totally understand yes. but we are no longer liable for size or fit or any alterations that might be needed so that's why yeah. we have you sign that sales contract yeah. so that you are totally aware that the size that we are ordering for you we are ordering for a reason and if for some reason you want us to order a different size than what we personally recommend that we are not responsible for fit when that comes in because it was almost kind of like against medical advice like you're not supposed to leave the hospital unless the doctor tells you to like if you're going to order a different dress than your bridal consultant tells you to or a different size then that's fine that's just something that you need to be aware of again and going back to courtney saying like we recommend a size there is another bride that was wearing a strapless a-line ball gown and she fit into a, one of our samples which was like i think a size 16 fit into it perfect mm -hmm. she said she was going to lose weight and she wanted to get a 12. we recommended her getting the size that she was right then because worst case scenario she can always she's going down. to take it down well worst case scenario she doesn't lose any weight it's going to still fit her perfect yep. and this bride did lose weight used a waist trainer and the dress still didn't fit because our bodies are our rib cages and our hips are set at a certain place everybody always wants to try to lose a little bit of weight before their wedding which is, which is totally fine girl you be on whatever body journey you or want if you're to. not wanting to girl girl live your truth that's fine that too however your rib cage it doesn't matter how many pounds you gain or lose your rib yeah. cage is always going to be that size and your, your hip width are, are always, always going, going to be, be that, that way size. so, so when we even recommend sizing if you're saying like i'm down 20 pounds already i'm gonna lose another 10. great let's get you in this size because um and i tell my girls too especially if they're in an a-line gown you have to lose probably about 70 percent of your total body weight for you have for this dress to now be outside of what we call alterable range which yep. means it can't be tailored down that much yep. and that probably means that you're at 60 pounds as a grown woman and you're probably dead at that point. So that's not a thing that's going to happen. No. Nope. But, you know, that bride that I just talked about, she did lose all the weight. The dress still didn't fit her. It was an entirely fully beaded top. She had to buy special beads and have the seamstress hand bead the place where she had that let out. And the biggest reason, it wasn't because she didn't lose the weight. She no. lost the weight. Her rib cage is a size 16. And she There's didn't, just, and she insisted on a totally different size than what our recommendation was at yep. the end of the day. So she ended so, up spending more money in alterations than she would have mm -hmm. had to had she maybe just listened to the idea that her body is her body and even Which though is she isn't a goal, you still need to understand that there are going to be limitations to how much yeah. your body is going to fluctuate before your wedding day. For our last little cautionary tale that we kind of want to tell you guys about, um, it sounds really, really simple and it sounds easy, but don't leave things in your car. And I know that sounds really silly, but we had a bride who she wanted to hide her wedding dress from her fiance. Her fiance was a little bit of a peeker. She didn't trust him, like just leaving it in the closet. So she came and she picked it up. And for about the four to six months before she needed to take it to alterations, she essentially, essentially left it in the back seat or the trunk of her car so that her fiance wouldn't see it. Then she took it out and went to the alterations process and the entire boning in the bodice had warped due to heat. So there was yeah. no physical way that they could really get that reshaped back into what she needed it to because the heat Replace damage the had already kind of taken away the structure that it needed. We also had a guy once who left his tuxedo uh, shoes that he rented from us in his car um, while it was a really, really hot weekend. And when he came and brought them back, they were like kind of curled up and the sole was coming undone from the shoe glue. So it sounds really, really simple, but one of the biggest things that we hear from people is they ended up um, kind of ruining or having a problem with their bridal party fits or attire because they left it in heat. And don't leave it in heat. There's a reason that we recommend a neutral room temperature, non-moist area to keep all of those things in because that is going to be the best way to keep everything in great condition. But 
then also making sure that everything stays safe and it should stay exactly the way it should normally be. But, so that kind of leads us to the end of some of our like cautionary tales and a little bit of like different stories of brides and bridal parties who have done things just a little bit differently and we hope that we gave you some really good advice to narrow down your own bridal dress search and try to pick up bridesmaids dresses and all of that type of stuff. So we hope that this just gave you a little bit of insight into how to go about doing this process. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have any other tips that you personally have discovered upon your own bridal gown Let us know. Um, shopping experience, uh, share that with us. We can also share that with others. Um, but otherwise, definitely give us a like and subscribe. Um, hear and it. check out any other of our other social media platforms, our Facebook and Instagram. We'd love, love to, to hear see, from you. Yeah, see and hear from you. So yeah, make sure that you yes. stay happy, stay blessed, and, and come say yes. yes.